welcome. God? No, it's Morgan, fool. Is that the only voice you got? Alexa got Samuel. Waze got Kevin and Shaq. But for five installments of $58.15, I can do a mean Larry David, which, might I say, is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Or for no extra charge, I can do Liam Neeson. Press the digital crown to continue, or I will find you, and I will kill you. Nah, I'm good. Uh, son, what exactly is it that you think you're doing? Wire it up. I gotta get the lost list. I swear, every tech reviewer out here buying $550 wireless headphones with a gyroscope, accelerometer, two H1 chips, nine microphones, and the first thing you fools want to do is pass the auxiliary. At least try them out like Tim Apple intended. Wireless. It's some crazy stuff, right? I mean, you can't walk on water, but spatial audio, baby! I'm laid back, but I don't front. Don't put me up in the max safe plug. Hit my line like it ain't just up. Present decline is a sugar. Yo, Jonathan here. Today I'm breaking down the brand new Apple Music update. Lossless, high res lossless, Dolby Atmos, spatial audio, what all that means, why you'd want to use it, and more importantly, how to properly use it. Now, because this is the internet, the one thing I want you to keep in mind throughout this video before you drop a comment is that all of these updates come with a price increase of $0. So it costs exactly the same as it did two weeks ago, but it's so much better. Before we jump into any of that exciting stuff though, just in case you wanna try it out for yourself, let's first talk about how to enable that update. I will specifically be referencing iOS devices, so iPad and iPhone, and with that, contrary to a couple of the comments I've seen, you don't need the iOS 15 beta to experience this, you simply need iOS 14.6. This update also comes to macOS, tvOS, so if you want a complete breakdown of which devices are supported, which headphones are supported, which regions are supported, because it may not work in every part of the world, I will drop that detailed breakdown down below. Once you're up to date with iOS 14.6, you're gonna to wanna to head over to settings and then to music. It should automatically show up. If it doesn't, I've seen a couple suggestions saying to toggle on and off your sync library. For me, that particular method did not work. I ended up just waiting overnight and it showed up the next day. And as always, when in doubt, restart. Once everything's updated and good to go, it should look like this. And from there, there are two important tabs to pay attention to, Dolby Atmos and audio quality. So what is Dolby Atmos? There's a good chance you've seen Dolby Vision on a TV show or a movie. That is a flavor of HDR, kind of the video side of things, whereas Atmos, that covers audio. It's kind of a more beefed up complex version of surround sound, but instead of a traditional 5.1 or 7.1 setup, you have sound coming from the sides of you and also from above firing down. So you're almost in this 360 degree box of sound. Typically, the way we consume music is in a stereo field, left to right or right to left. That's why you see that L and that R on your headphones, or you have a pair of speakers. Don't get me wrong, there are incredible stereo mixes with huge space and separation and great use of panning. Take the Beatles, for example. Especially now that Lossless is here, if you get a chance to listen to the Beatles with a good pair of headphones, what they did with a stereo mix and panning is ridiculous. So hopping into Logic Pro, typically you'll have the lead vocal which sits right smack in the middle. Then you might have guitars that are panned left or right or both, creating kind of the stereo wall. So you can see how you could create space, left to right, right to left. But once you see how something is mixed in Dolby Atmos, it's a completely different level. Let's try this track here. Yeah, okay, so. Uh... So I'm kind of moving that a bit of in a circle. And then, and I can also go up. When you're in the speakers, it's really pretty dramatic because you're actually pinpointing all these things. For anybody who hasn't actually heard an Atmos mix, it really is something, it's, it is, a big, big step up from just 5.1. Uh, and 
it mainly has to do with the side speakers and the height speakers. You know, with 5.1, we basically had in our, you know, in front of us and then in back of us with shades in between, but uh, having stuff up there and stuff directly in your side speakers, the detail in between front to back is really something. And then being able to hear things from anywhere above you. It can be subtle. It can be very dramatic. Um, it, it's, it's whatever you want it to be. It's just basically a big panner that you can do anything that you want. It's the Wild West. I'll drop a link to that video as well as the song I showcased before that down below. But once you really get a grasp of what the potential is, it is so exciting. With that said though, I think Dolby Atmos and Spatial Audio really exposes the tracks that weren't properly mixed for it because I guarantee you there is a ton of songs and albums and artists who wanted to jump on that playlist, that stream wave and click that Spatial Audio Dolby Atmos button. And you can tell there are some that sound like hot garbage. Honestly, I hadn't used AirPods Max a ton up until this update. I always kind of reverted back to AirPods Pro because of the convenience, but getting Dolby Atmos with music takes the AirPods Max to a completely different level. The entire Come Away With Me album by Nora Jones is probably the best AirPods Max plus Dolby Atmos experience I've come across. It is jaw dropping, specifically Shoot the Moon. Oh. My goodness, the acoustic guitars on the left and the right, then the piano comes in and it's just perfectly carved out in its own space. And then the vocals come in, it is beautiful. As far as a more modern take on music, the entire Olivia Rodrigo album sounds incredible. Like you could tell it was mixed for Dolby Atmos. Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles is also another great example. And I think because that was recorded to such a high quality source with tape and analog, and they did so many things with panning in a stereo field, once that was brought into a Dolby Atmos world, it just worked so damn well. What I Got by Sublime also translates really well. Surprisingly, a good chunk of the rock playlist, the classical, the jazz, those all work really well. I particularly enjoyed the RME, the tonic on the rock playlist. So what I'll do is try to put together my playlist of what I think works best in Dolby Atmos and Spatial Audio because you definitely have to sift through the junk. That aside though, I think this is the future of music. Like, could you imagine a John Mayer trio album mixed in Dolby Atmos and being able to hear it on AirPods Pro or AirPods Max? That would be incredible. I know a lot of people out there are going to kind of be turned off or not have an open mind, which I think is ultimately a bummer. I think the beauty of this update is yes, you do have the option to enable Atmos and that's right there in the settings where you can leave it set to automatic or straight turn it off or on. But I think if you don't truly give it a chance, you're going to miss out. The way that I try to look at tech is more through the lens of me, but like years and years ago. In story time, I lost my dad when I was 18, but I think a lot of my passion and love for tech comes directly from him. He was always on the latest and greatest. We would always go to Hollywood Video, and specifically there was one time that will forever stick in my mind where he walked up to the desk and asked the guy working there, hey, do you guys have Blu-rays yet? And the guy was like, what's a Blu-ray? He was always on top of it. So I try to think, you know, what would my dad think? How cool would it be to show him this? Like he loved the Beatles and imagine if I could show him that in Atmos or Spatial Audio. So I try to keep that excitement and not lose sight of it because so many of us in the tech world tend to do that. Ultimately though, if you're a purist, I get it. If you wanna enjoy that lossless or high-res lossless with a pair of headphones and a DAC, there is some beautiful, beautiful stuff there. To make sure that is enabled properly, we're gonna go back to settings and then audio quality. We're gonna make sure that lossless audio is enabled and below that, there are three very important tabs to pay attention to. So what we have here is your audio quality over cellular, Wi-Fi, and then downloads. It's probably a good idea, especially if you don't have a giant data plan, not to enable lossless over cellular because those gigabytes will fill up and fly fast. For most of us, what we're probably gonna wanna do is select lossless or high-res lossless over Wi-Fi because it's not gonna count against your data plan or space on your phone. Conversely, if you do have a ton of storage on your phones, offline is probably the best idea if you're at home and you wanna download those tracks over Wi-Fi. And then that way, once you're out traveling, whether you're on the road or potentially flying, you're not tagging or hitting your data plan because they're already on your phone. 
Now, I don't by any means consider myself an audiophile. I like things that sound good, but I generally don't like the mindset behind the audiophile movement because usually it's like, if you're not using a DAC wearing wired headphones, listening to a FLAC file, they judge you. And I'm like, hey, if I wanna use wireless just for convenience most of the time and then wire up when I want to, that's not gonna affect you. If, however, this lossless experience opens up Pandora's box and starts a new habit for you, two channels I could wholeheartedly recommend are Joshua Valor and Darko Audio. They know their stuff, they're pros, they get it, and more importantly, they're down-to-earth cool dudes. With that said, I'm not going to go on a Vsauce 3 type explanation of what lossless audio is. Shout out to Jake. But as far as what lossless audio does for you, it's essentially allowing you to listen to that piece of music as close to the original source as possible with nothing in the way. Really, there are two numbers you gotta pay attention to, bit depth and then sample rate. So take a CD, for example, remember those things? That has a bit depth of 16 and a sample rate of 44.1. Spoiler alert, and this may be a little bit of a surprise for a lot of you out there, even though Apple Music technically supports all the way up to 24192, the majority of music out there taps out at 2448. A lot of it will sit in that window of 1644, 1648, 2444, or 2448. You do have some instances where music will go higher, a lot of the Travis Scott stuff is 2488. The Search for Everything by John Mayer is 2496. And surprisingly, a lot of the older music that must have been recorded to analog and then brought into this modern world, that got remastered to 2496 or 24192. Of course, Hotel California and all of its 12 string glory are in 24192. To my surprise, the entire Disturbed Studio Collection is in 24192. There's even some Metallica, some Pantera, and Linkin Park in high res lossless. So all that's cool, but how exactly do you make sure you're listening to music in lossless? And surprise, surprise number two, the cheapest way to get into that door is Apple's $10 Lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter because that will get you up to 2448. And again, like we talked about, that's most of the music out there. Are there better DACs and options out there? Absolutely, but for the money, it is surprisingly good. Personally, my go-to way to listen to lossless with Apple Music is using a Dragonfly from AudioQuest. They come in three different flavors and price points. You have black, red and then cobalt, essentially the higher up the ladder you step, the better the converters are, but all three of these will get you up to 2496. My go-to headphones to pair with the Dragonfly are the Bear Dynamic DT 1990 Pros. I do have a pair of IEMs that I love, but I end up reverting back to the Bear Dynamics like 85% of the time, whether I'm working on music, mixing, editing a video, or in this case, listening. Now those headphones aren't to the moon expensive, but they're also not the most entry affordable options either. So what I'll do is post a couple different options of over ear, on ear, in ear that are under the $300 price point to pair either with the Dragonfly or that Apple Lightning adapter. So what if you love Hotel California and you wanna hear it in 24, 192 glory, what do you need? The answer is a better DAC. In my case, the audio interfaces that I use from RME, the Fireface and the Babyface, those work exceptionally. All of a sudden, the M1 iPad Pro has turned into this incredible high-res music machine that you can dish out 24192. So I've set it up with higher-end studio speakers, which has been incredible. But I think what the setup is for most people is the iPad Pro paired with the Babyface, which has been phenomenal. Probably the best part about this combination is the Babyface Pro is bus powered. So one cable directly into the iPad and you are set with a great interface to record music, to mix, to listen back. Now to play back high res lossless music. I've actually used this combination a ton, the Babyface paired with the iPad Pro and it's been incredible. I challenged myself to record and mix an entire song using nothing but the iPad Pro and to level that up, shoot a video in HDR edit on the iPad with the XDR display and then upload that to YouTube in HDR. So if you wanna see how that turned out, I got that link up here and down below. So if you truly wanna experience 24192 true high-res lossless, that's a great way to go. I'll also drop some other options down below. But I think the most important thing to remember here is again, most music caps out at 2448. So either 
that lightning adapter or the Dragonfly is going to be more than enough for most of you out there. I will also post a playlist of some of my favorite music in Lhasa so you guys can check out as well. Shout out to MagSafe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped. If you enjoyed it and you found it useful, drop a like down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.